Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will be looking at a 2017 psychological horror thriller movie titled Gerald's Game. At the beginning of the movie, we see Jesse and Gerald, a couple looking for a fun weekend. We see them packing their luggage for a short trip to the countryside. Gerald packs a pair of handcuffs as well. After the packing is done, they get in their car and start their journey. Jessie's enjoying the beautiful scenery through the window when her husband puts his hand on her thigh and starts pulling her skirt up. Jessie, who is not in the mood, stops him. Gerald tells her that he is sure the trip will be a lot of fun for both of them. Gerald honks at it, and the dog makes way for the car and then continues eating. Gerald complains about the stray dog while Jessie notices a collar on the dog's neck. Finally, they reach their destination, a beautiful house with a beach view. Jessie goes to the fridge and sees that it has already been stocked full for them. She takes some meat out and waits for the hungry dog they saw earlier. The dog comes there soon enough and starts to eat meat. Meanwhile, Gerald, who is in the bathroom, takes a Viagra pill. He comes out and calls Jessie, which makes the dog run away in fear. He tells her that the meat is too expensive to be given to an animal, but they laugh the matter off and head inside for a good time. We see Jessie lying in the bed wearing a very seductive nightgown. She tries to pose in a seductive way as well for Gerald. Gerald asks her if she is ready from the bathroom. He then comes out with a pair of handcuffs. Jessie seems not to be sure about the handcuffs but agrees to put them on anyway. Gerald uses the handcuffs to tie her hands to both sides of the bed. He then takes another Viagra pill before approaching Jessie. She is by this point visibly uncomfortable. He tells her to pretend to call for help and she replies by saying that she feels uncomfortable. Not enough to stop him, Gerald approaches. She then starts to yell at him to stop as he is going too wild. Gerald, who is very annoyed by this point, asks Jessie why she even decided to come. Jessie replies that she cannot play some sexual assault fantasy with him just to make him happy. She tells him that it is very disturbing that her husband has such fantasies. Gerald gets up from the bed. Jessie tells him that their relationship is not going to work. Gerald now decides to play the victim and says that the reason behind their relationship falling apart is his incapability to have sex. Jessie tries to console him and asks him to untie her as well. Gerald asks what can she do if she does not do so and gets on top of her. The thought of her husband sexually assaulting her frightens Jessie. Gerald continues forcing her. Jessie bites his lip in rage. Gerald now tries the emotional drama with her talking about the times they were happy together. All of a sudden, Gerald seems very uneasy and uncomfortable. Jesse asks him about it, but he does not answer. As it turns out, Gerald was having a heart attack and falls on top of Jesse. Jesse is genuinely very scared by this point. She even thinks that he might just be joking and asks him to get up, but to no avail. She then pushes him up with her legs to get a better look at him, as she is still handcuffed. Gerald's body rolls over and falls from the bed. The head hits first and starts bleeding, with no way to get out. Jesse calls out for help, but no one comes as the house is far away from the population. By the evening, Jesse has tried everything to set herself free, but nothing worked. Suddenly, she hears footsteps approaching the room. She thinks it might be someone to help her. She calls out to the person, but it turns out to be the dog she fed earlier. The dog comes over to Gerald's dead body and sniffs it. Jesse realizes that it is about to eat the body and yells at the dog to back off. However, the starving dog does not listen and takes a bite off Gerald's forearm. Jessie is horrified to see her husband's flesh in a dog's mouth. Then, all of a sudden, Gerald gets up and starts talking. Jessie is relieved and asks him to uncuff her quickly. Gerald, however, looks at the wound on his forearm and blames Jessie for feeding the dog earlier. As he speaks, Jessie notices that the dead body is still on the floor. She is shocked as she realizes that the man she is talking to is just her hallucination. Jessie looks like she is about to have a mental breakdown. The hallucination tries to knock some sense into her, and she takes action. She pulls one of her hands out of the handcuffs and breaks the bar she was tied to, to free her other hand. She stands up with confidence only to see herself still tied to the bed. As it turns out, she hallucinated the whole escape. The hallucinations are now both trying to convince Jessie to take action and not waste any time as no one will come to save her. Now it is dark outside and the dog is still feeding on Gerald's dead body. Jessie is dehydrated and while talking to her hallucinations, she realizes that the shelf above her head has a glass of water. 
She somehow gets it, but the cuffs restrict her from drinking it. Her hallucination tells her to use the cards on the other shelf to drink the water, and she does. After this, she falls asleep. When she wakes up, she sees someone coming toward her. She thinks it's a ghost and freaks out, but calms herself down by talking to her hallucinations. She thinks about her childhood. On the vacation to a lake where she overhears her parents talking bad about her. She and her father watching a solar eclipse. Her father asks her to sit on his lap. She realizes that her father is taking advantage of her innocence and being traumatized. She now comes back to the real world. Gerald's hallucination asks her why she never told him about the incident, and she says that she has too many secrets. He tells her that the dog left because it was scared of something. She closes her eyes and thinks about her childhood once again, her being in front of the mirror in her room as her father approached her. Her father apologizes for his actions earlier. Suddenly, she wakes up to the dog biting her leg. She kicks it away and goes back to Gerald's body. Gerald's hallucination comes to her and makes her believe that she will die soon. She fades and sees her childhood again. She's at the lake house handcuffed. She apologizes to her young self. Then she sees herself at the dining table. She breaks a glass in anger looking at her father talk so happily. When she wakes up, she comes up with an idea. Jessie's hallucination also approves the plan. She calms herself down and slowly takes the glass from the shelf above her. She places the glass against the plank and successfully breaks it. She then uses the broken glass pieces to cut her wrist. She cuts her wrist even when it is extremely painful, and at last, she frees one of her hands. But the skin came off as well. Without wasting any time at all, she moves to the other side of the bed and tries to grab her phone, but the phone is already dead. She tries even harder to grab the cuff keys, but with the wounded hand, it is very difficult to control her fingers. She manages to uncuff her somehow. Now relieved, she goes to the sink and cleans her wrist. She drinks the tap water but chokes on it, as she has not had anything for quite some time now. She takes out a bandage and wraps her wounded hand with it. She somehow fell on the bed due to tiredness and weakness and fell asleep. A while later, she wakes up as the dog bites one of her hands. She hits the dog and it runs away. She notices that the dog is scared of something and runs off into another room. Sensing someone's presence, she goes to check it out. She comes across a huge man standing there and is scared of it. She takes out her wedding ring and gives it to him. She then leaves the house without saying a word. The man, still observing the ring carefully, does not do anything. After driving for a while, she sees Gerald waving a final goodbye. The pain in her hand is unbearable and she keeps dozing off and eventually crashes into a tree. The crash made a very loud noise which is heard by the people in a house nearby. Some people come to rescue her and she is still determined to live even with her head open. In the next scene, we see Jessie riding something with a shaky hand. There is a glove on the hand so she has not yet recovered completely. She got insurance money after doctors confirmed that Gerald's death was due to a heart attack. Her life has gone back to normal, but every night before she sleeps, the same question disturbs her. Where did her wedding ring go? Did she really hand it over to a ghost who she thought was dead? With the insurance money, Jessie starts a foundation to help young people recover from traumas. Jessie narrates that she is fine during the days, but the nights are too long for her. Six months after the incident, she sees a man named Raymond Jubert in the newspaper. He's a serial killer who cuts up corpses and strips their jewelry. He has done a lot of crimes and he suffers from acromegaly. Police found him with two corpses whom he called Mommy and Daddy. This is when Jessie realizes that Jobert was the ghost that she encountered that night. She goes to his court hearing, Jobert, who had not spoken a word till she sees her and says that she is not real. She sees her father and husband in him. She says that he was much smaller than she remembers and walks outside with no fear and a lot of confidence.